Hey there. I want to start off by apologising if my speaking seems really unnatural. Uh, I feel a bit awkward as I have had to do this entire video in a voiceover due to my noisy kids in the background while filming as it was school holidays here at the time. Anyway, on with the craft project. So this is my piece that I picked up from a thrift shop quite some time ago and I'm going to use polymer clay to modify it. Um, I, yeah, as I say, I got it quite a while ago and I just really liked the look of it and thought I could turn it into something really nifty, something really cool. Um, and I've only used polymer clay once before and that was actually in my last video doing Biff and that was just for a pair of nostrils and a mouth. So very, very limited knowledge. I had to go online, look up some YouTubers that do polymer clay like Creative Rachy and Ace of Clay and Nerdy Crafter. Got some great ideas from them which all totally went out the window when I was actually doing it because I'm, you know, I'm a hands-on learner. I do best by learning. Anywho, these are my little sketches I came up with and I came up with the idea of putting a little critter inside the ice cream container. And I kind of based him, I looked at lots of different pictures of animals and he's just sort of an animal mashup. He's just my own little creation that I came up with. Bit of a badger in there, bit of a deer, bit of a fox. Uh, anyway, moving on. I started off by trying to sand this thing and it was just going to be too difficult. Had a little go, that awful ugh, yucky feeling you get when you sand something, it's absolutely disgusting. So I just went right ahead and popped some gesso on. This was mistake number one. Um, I should have sanded it, should have taken the time, but I didn't. Uh, mistake number two was doing this before baking it in the oven. Note to self, do not bake acrylic paint on items. It didn't totally ruin it in the end, but yeah, definitely should have waited for the painting process. Um, and I went and mixed up some colors, tried to color in my little sketch just to get an idea on what colors I wanted. Um, I actually ended up sticking quite to the original colors of the ice cream, uh, but then just, you know, making them a bit nicer, my own colors. And then I wanted um, the little critter, I wanted his colour or her colour, whatever he, she is, um, to match a little bit with the ice cream. So that's why I chose pink. So it looks like a, a pink ice cream critter. And these are the colours I mixed up. Um, <laughs> I make a lot of mistakes. Um, those are the ice cream cone colours, that first chocolate colour you can see in the big container. That was the chocolate syrup. Uh, I've got my strawberry colour and my ice cream colour. Yeah, here's my next mistake. I put down this ice cream cone colour um, and thinking I was putting down the right one because I have two colours, one lighter, one darker. And I was actually supposed to put the darker shade down first, but I didn't put the lighter shade down. So, big mistake. But that's okay, I fix it in the end. So I've got my, getting my first coat on this can, ice cream. Um, it took quite a few layers to get a really nice build up of color. I actually think my acrylic paints, actually I know my acrylic paints, they're really, really rubbish. I need to spend some money and invest in getting some really good acrylic paints uh, to have better coverage because it took so many layers. 
And here I am fixing my mistake, going in, putting the darker colour down. Then I go back as you can see here, and I'm, oh, I've never done this sort of thing before, and so it just took some testing. I don't know that I was entirely happy with it in the end, but it's the best way I knew how to do this, just using a really dry brush, and because it's, uh, it's ridged, the waffle cone is really ridged, and just trying to pat on the colour, just so the darker shade was in the deeper crevices, and the lighter shade was on the outer. So I could really pick up that nice pattern of the waffle cone. It worked, It kind of worked in the end. I'm sure there's a better way. And do you know what? I'm sure there's so many of you out there that would be able to give me lots of tips and hints. So as you're watching this video, please, 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 please leave comments. Leave me some advice. Ooh, yep. Nice bit of chocolate there for a break. A <laughs> cup of coffee. Um, yeah, please leave me some advice. I'd really appreciate any advice. So moving forward as I'm doing more projects, um, yeah, you can help us out. Here are the beautiful colours I mixed up for my sprinkles. Uh, I had to place the sprinkles on this over the existing sprinkles because the uh, original ice cream piece had the little ridges on its side. You know, I had to go straight over the top, otherwise I would have liked to have spread them out more evenly. But I'm really happy with the colours, way better than the old colours. These were really pretty. Bit of a, a kind of a rainbow, but without the red. Although it's got pink, so I don't know. Rainbow-ish but it really nice and bright. Brightened it up, made it look really cheery. Okay, these are the tools I already had um, from an old uni project using um, air dry clay. I had to make a model. Um, but I've ordered these in with um, some epoxy sculpt that I've purchased for another project and I've got the tools. And these ended up being quite good and they came from an Australian company called Over the Rainbow. Um, yeah, that's them. And really reasonably priced. Gave me some chockies in my order, so that's always nice. And I, the, the clay I used um, was clay I already had. I didn't go out and buy any more because I thought I'd have enough. Silly me, yet another mistake. So that clay that you see there, that actually came out of a craft kit that I'm supposed to do a review on upcoming, but I'm not going to now because I pinched the clay out of it. Um, but this one's the Fimo that I used on Biff for my last video. And it's so hard to get to a workable stage. But I did find that if I rolled it in between my hands, that worked it a little bit, but then the warmth from my hand softened it up as well. So it did get there in the end. And once it's workable, it's really good to use. It's just really hard getting to that point. Um, and then this clay I have here, I had uh, brought quite a while ago. And I used this to color it. And this is Montmartre. Now this starts off really soft to begin with. Uh, but I find it gets too soft and a little gooey. Um, I know there are ways you can overcome this. I watched in some tutorials. I can't remember how though. Um, but as I was just using it to color my clay, I didn't think it was that big a deal. Um, this is gonna be for his head. It's gonna be a lovely light pink color. And this is uh, forming up the shape of my head. I did see this in the tutorials. Um, I had the first one I did was too small and the shape was rubbish. This shape was a little bit rubbish too. Um, and as I said before, I just did not have enough clay. I wish I'd gone out and bought some clay, but silly me, I didn't.
this is where my limited knowledge of polymer clay becomes blindingly obvious. Um, because I wanted to make my critter using coloured clay instead of painting it, I made the features first, then attached them to the head base, which should have been fine, except I added the fur texture before attaching it. Not sure why I thought doing the texture at this point would be sensible, but not even I understand my own thought process most of the time. Um, this fur texture that I add will get damaged, removed and redone several times as I go along. Another thing I'm not sure was the correct thing to do was using the Fimo gel bond stuff to make the mouthpiece attached to the head securely. But I just thought, you know, better to be safe than sorry. And I didn't want the all that fur piece to fall off while baking it in the oven. Um, and I used the same process of scoring both pieces, um, something I used to do doing normal clay when I was much, much younger. Um, and then using that glue stuff, so you score it, use the glue stuff on it and then attach it on. After attaching it, I thought the grey area was sticking out too far, so I gave him a little shave, and that's where I lose a lot of the fur texture. I just spent ages doing, like seriously, it took me so long doing that fur texture, and then I just shaved it all off. Um, this whole project was just one mistake after another, after another, but it also means I learnt a lot in the process of actually making those mistakes. Um, something else I learned was I shouldn't have switched between painting and clay making, so I mean, I tried to keep my hands and the work surface clean, but I would paint the ice cream while I waited for that to dry. I'd work on the clay critter and then back to painting and back and forth I would go. But no matter how clean I tried to be, I would transfer from my hands and the table. Some of the paint would still be there and it'd get on the critter, which was a real pain. Um, and here I'm making some ears. Um, something I did learn from watching other others use polymer clay is if you want two pieces the same size you roll an even type sausage and cut it into two pieces then cut those two pieces at the same time to your desired size and then you end up with two pieces as close to the same size as you can get um, and the initial shape of these ears looked rather like Dobby from Harry Potter and gave my peer piece a, um, a weird elf look but that gets fixed later so that's fine And it's time to add in some more of his facial features. I uh, used black for the inside of the mouth. Um, then I add in this little tongue. I also put a darker pink inside his ears um, to look like a different coloured fur. So they're really fluffy, furry ears. And then a couple of little teeth, eyes, nose. 
and keep bulking out. I still had a little bit of clay that I'd mixed up that I'd kept aside just in case, which I'm really glad I did because I used it to bulk out the head a little bit more in the front. And this is popping on his little nose. I was still doubting myself. It's funny, I was still doubting myself at this point that it was ever going to look any good. Even once I got the eyes on, I was just looking at it going, oh, this just isn't right. I could feel that there was just something wrong with it. It just wasn't looking like my sketch. And I was feeling, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't, I didn't know how to make it better. More fur texture. Wow, that fur took so long. It's kind of therapeutic doing it though. When you started, when I started doing the fur, it was just like, oh, I just want to get this done. Come on, this is just taking so long. But then once you got into the groove of doing it, it um, yeah, it was quite therapeutic. Make his little teeth, his little fangs, just two little fangs sticking out the front. Actually, the teeth helped a lot. I think it was with the teeth I started to see his little character because that's what I really wanted. I wanted him to have real character. And this, this is another moment that I finally realised I'd done something really wrong. And that was his ears. In the picture, the ears sat really, really low. And that I think that gave him an element of cuteness. Whereas on, you can see on my clay model, those ears are sitting up really high. Um, so that required some delicate reconstruction surgery. Chop, chop. <laughs> Off go those ears. Poor thing. And I just had to get them tilted the right way as well. I wanted... I wanted them to be pointing more down, but enough that you could see the fur inside the ears as well, because I thought that looked cute. And these little hands, or should I say little paws. It's hard getting that right too. And the back of that head, oh, that's so gross. <laughs> so weird. Looks like someone melted the back of his head. Poor thing. Then I've attached the lid on there with that um, bond, that gel bond stuff. And then it was just finally going around, fixing up the fur, popped on some little brown blobs to make it look like the um, chocolate sauce had drizzled on and then it was time to pop in the oven. After baking the whole thing in the oven, uh, some of the colours on the original piece had discoloured, as I'd mentioned before. Do not bake acrylic paint, um, especially the white. So I had to go back over it before giving it a final coat of Mod Podge um, to yeah clean up those colours and make them look nicer. Note to self, invest in better varnish glazes. I'm pretty sure Mod Podge is better suited to paper crafts rather than clay. Dun, dun, dun. Here is my finished product, my little ice cream critter. It started as a ceramic ice cream shaped container, then it was a rough sketch, and now look at him. He is a little flawed in more than one place, but I'm pleased with the end result. I feel like he needs a name. What a learning experience this was, and probably the biggest thing I learned is I love using polymer clay, and I'll most definitely want to keep doing more of these types of projects and other polymer clay projects. And I really love taking something old um, that you get from a thrift shop and making it new again. I, I don't think I'm confident enough or skilled enough to make something from scratch yet from polymer clay, but I really do enjoy the creative process of reimagining something and see that image come to life. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more random craft projects, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell so you know when I post another vid. 
Thanks for sticking around and I hope to see you again next time. Catch you later.